Hi, I'm Sharon Gable, and I'd like to do a brief tutorial on anticlines. I'd like to help students who are in introductory physical geology classes, or maybe high school earth science classes, understand better what they're looking at on geologic cross sections and geologic maps. So let's start with a simple layering of sedimentary rocks. Um, we have the surface up here at the top, and just below the surface, there's a sandstone rock formation. And that overlies a shale rock formation. Beneath the shale, there's some limestone, this brickwork pattern. And here where the brickwork pattern is kind of like tilted <laughs> bricks, or I don't know what you call them, but that's supposed to represent dola stone on the bottom. The principle of superposition, you know, tells us that the dola stone is the oldest rock. And as we go upward through this stack of sedimentary rock formations, they get younger and younger. So our youngest rock formation is the sandstone up here at the top. Well, folding can happen when rocks in the crust are under compression. If these rocks here are being squeezed, maybe because plates are colliding, as shown with the arrows, one way the rocks can respond to that stress is by folding. And this arch-like fold, or anticline, has formed in response to the compressional stress. So anticlines do form as a result of compression in the Earth's crust. Usually that compression is caused by plate collisions. Now what we see in a geologic cross-section, or if we had a map view, what we see is affected by erosion that wears down through these folded rock layers over time. So we're going to start out on the top with our rock layers folded into the anticline. And down here we're looking at what has happened after millions of years of erosion wearing down through the tops of these different sedimentary rock formations. So what do we have if we hike across the surface of the earth from left to right on this cross section? Well, we would be hiking over some sandstone. And notice that the sandstone is tilted or dipping toward the left. And then if we go a little bit farther to the right, we would be walking over shale. And if we had some decent outcrops, we would see that the shale is also dipping to the left. Here's our thick layers of limestone, and they're also dipping to the left. And then we get onto the dola stone in the center. The dola stone sort of flattens out in here, as you can see from the bottom of that rock layer. And as we walk onto the right hand side of our diagram, we're going to see those same rock formations. We're going to walk from the dola stone onto the limestone, but this time the limestone is dipping to the right. Same way with our shale over here. Farther to the right, it's dipping to the right, and our sandstone is also dipping to the right. The center of our fold is called the fold axis, and whenever you have an anticline, the rocks on either side or limb of the anticline dip away from the fold axis, right? If you put a marble on any of the rock surfaces on either side or limb of the fold, the marble would roll away from the center, away from the fold axis. Now to relate this cross section view, which is actually the easy part, to a geologic map, I like to use uh, visible geology, it's called. You can Google visible geology, or you can type in the URL shown here and go to this visible geology site. When you get there, it'll look like something like this, and you can click visualize. The great thing about visible geology is it shows you the different features in a block diagram that allows you to relate the cross-section view to what you would see on a map or a surface view. So I'm going to go to View Models, where they've already created a model of an anticline. All right, so it's spun around here, and now we can look at the same kind of view we saw in our crude drawing we showed a minute ago. Let me put it on full screen to make it a little bit bigger. You see the classic uh, anticline shape, the arch-like shape of our different rock formations. Now, this surface up at the top represents 
the land surface. Remember the land surface is the result of millions of years of erosion down through these rock layers like the green one, the light green one, the light purple one, and so on and so forth. Our yellow rock layer is the bottom one of all the ones that we see exposed at the surface of the earth. And the one on the bottom is the oldest. And as we go toward the top of our rock layers, they get younger and younger, right? So when you have a map view of an anticline, we'll see the oldest rock exposed along the fold axis in the center here. And if we were to hike away from the fold axis out onto either limb of the fold, we would see younger and younger rocks exposed along the limbs of our anticline. This yellow layer is older than these layers above it by principle of superposition. And it's because this is an arch-like fold, right? The anticline causes our formerly horizontal sedimentary rock layers to be pushed up in the center. And that's going to expose our oldest rock along the center or axis of the anticline and younger and younger rocks out on the limbs of the anticline. The only thing that's lacking here are some strike and dip symbols. So I'm going to just take a little screenshot of that map and draw on it. So here's the map view of our anticline. And I just wanted to show the fold axis. I'm going to draw it in as a dashed line, cutting right down through the center of our old yellow, <laughs> the old yellow rock formation. Remember, because this is an arch-like fold, the limbs of the fold dip away from the fold axis, away from the axis of the anticline. So I'm going to draw a couple of strike and dip symbols. The strike of the rocks on either limb of the anticline is just north-south. And the rocks here on the right-hand side were dipping to the right. So I'm going to draw my little dip part of my strike and dip symbol, indicating that the rocks over here are tilted to the right. And then the rocks over here on the left-hand side or limb of the fold, they're dipping to the left. Okay, so northeast southwest wise, the rocks over here on the right hand limb of the fold are dipping to the east, and the rocks over here on the left hand side are dipping to the west. Sorry, it's a little messy. So when you see the dip directions on your strike a dip symbols on either limb of a fold, and those dip symbols are indicating the rocks are dipping away from the fold axis on either side. That's how you know there's an anticline in the subsurface. Now if you didn't have the strike and dip symbols on the geologic map, if you only had, you know, just the uh, rock formations like you see here, you'd have to be given a legend, a legend that indicates the relative ages of the rock to interpret whether this fold is an anticline or a syncline. Remember the rule is for an anticline, the oldest rock is exposed along the fold axis. Well, I hope that helps you recognize anticlines on geologic maps.